All right, I'm on hole number nine of the Americana Classic. I'm having kind of an up and down round. Haven't had anything spectacular. I did get a hole in one on seven. And, but I haven't really had anything. It hasn't been a spectacular round. Now what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to be as low. So like if we draw a line through here, let's scan out just a little. So if we draw a line from this area right here coming out, I'm trying to be on this side of the line. So I don't even care if I'm short down here. I'd rather be short down here and take that shot so that I have an opener shot to the green than be up here where now I have to maneuver around that sand. So I really do want to just kind of lay up out there. If you do the, no, so here's the problem. When you do a bounce over and you're on this side, and then you come over to here. You, if you want to be able to stop really fast, you've got to be able to get over there. You can't be doing, unless you're going to do overpower in order to get to the spot that you need, you can't really bring a, a smaller ball because a smaller ball is going to require that you have to put topspin just to get over. And that topspin is going to make you carry, and this thing carries really, really fast. So it's a tricky deal to end up short here. But I do definitely want to be more towards the bottom than the top because I think the shot coming in from the bottom is a better shot at Alby. And I need any advantage I can get. To get that Alby. I'm going to take this bag, but I'm going to take a sniper. And I'm not going to be in my Saturn range. I think I can do get this done with the Titan. Alright, opened up another chest. Got a bunch of club cards for some clubs. I never really pay attention to those chests. I just open up chests. It's the way it's always been. It, you just have to open up lots of chests. And one day you'll open up a chest and all of a sudden you'll have some number down there by your chest that tells you that there's something new. When you first start, you're doing that all the time or you don't have enough cash flow to to just open them up as they as they become available but when you first start playing you really have to be aware of which clubs are worth opening because there's a lot of those clubs that are you're never going to play with them so they're never worth opening until you get enough you get a bankroll big enough that you can just open up all your clubs just so that you're all up to date it, you're going to do it sooner or later and you're probably going to the best time to do it is when you get about 200 about 2 million you're playing tour seven. That still gives you a million, million two. Opponent hits a perfect. And that thing wants to roll towards that green really fast. I can tell you that from personal experience. I've ended up in that rough up there. It's it's been real touch and go with that rough. I'm going to give myself a little more room here. 3-5. I'm going to do that as about a little over a ring and a half. I'm going to put a little bit of curl to get it to go back to the left when I moved it over to the right. And even with all that backspin, you can see how much it floated down that. It's tough to get low, low on that hole, in that area, but I am lower than my opponent. So you can see where my opponent's path coming in. And the deal here is that the way they've cut this fringe area back here in the back and the way that that sand trap moves, the further you go to the right, the further it is forward. So if you set it up at the hole and you don't have enough side spin, it's really easy if you put any curl like that on it that you'll end up clipping that rough or you'll end up in the sand. You really have to hit this shot perfect. See how close he was to the rough right there? 
So just a little to, and when you're doing curl like that, it's hard to judge like how much did I put on there last time. And just a little bit more and you clip the rough on a perfect shot. And I really think I'm gonna have to just buckle down and bring a three side spin ball on this hole. I mean, there's just no way. Okay, so it's three, four. I'm gonna put a little bit of curl. I think I'm actually in front of the sand enough. I'm gonna put a little bit of curl to bring it back to the hole. And they had a great to the left. I was running out of time. See, and it also has a wind adjustment down there. I need to make that and make a note on that because that was not where I set that ball up. Even the grate there, that's a wind adjustment. I'm hitting a max number at max club, but it's almost like the hole's downhill. And I'm over adjusting it. here on how I want to make my wind adjustment next time. Let's see what it looks like when it's farther back. Isn't it perfect? At the hole. Alright, that was an eagle, but that was a diff diff disappointing albatross shot. I don't really like hole number nine and I'm not gonna play this hole. I'm gonna, I'm going to, as soon as this tournament's over, I'm gonna play whatever tour this hole's in. And I'm gonna try and get this hole as often as I can because I'm gonna figure out how to do a max overpower hook shot. I'm gonna figure out where to set it up and which ball to use. So the next time it's, this hole's in a tournament, hole number nine's in a tournament, I can um, go in there and Try and do a max overpower hook, something that'll get me closer because that, you know, we're having to work really hard to get into that spot and that shot's not, if you fail and you're further forward than where we're at, you can still get on, but it's worth exploring to get up there. You can do it in expert, but they have a lot higher winds, so sometimes that plays a factor and sometimes the fact that we're from the front tees and they're from the back tees, that makes up the difference. All right, that was hole number nine of the American Classic Tournament. Um, minus 14 coming out of it, so that's not exactly what I was looking for. I'm looking for what the person right above me has at the minus 15. I did um, drop two of the par fours, but I was able to pick up one hole in one, so it kind of still put me on a good track, but uh, either one of those two par fours, and that would have been set up right there. So I have a lot of work left. I mean, I'm going to have to shoot on the back nine. I'm going to have to shoot a minus 16 in order to have any shot. I mean, that's minus 30. And with minus 30, you're giving yourself a legitimate shot of winning a bracket. Now, some tournaments, you know, a minus 30 is not going to get it done. And I think this tournament's one of the ones that, you know, it might get it done and it might not. But right now, that's pretty much my best. That I, What I'm looking for is like that minus 16 at minus 30. And I think that'll at least give me a top five. But the, whoever's at the top, I would imagine, is probably above minus 30. All right, that was hole number nine. Thanks for watching.